This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Robert Grover and Gary Logan guide and empower you to embark on a bespoke journey that connects you to a greater awareness of self congruent with deep joy, profound creativity, and abundant prosperity. As your awareness expands and you move through new layers of truth, flow accelerates and you return to the world with clarity of purpose, ease of action, and joy is alive in your being. With access to new quantum streams of consciousness, you attune your being to flow with the laws that influence reality and live in harmony and sustainable balance with the natural world. The greatest power you will ever wield is the expansiveness of your multidimensional awareness of pure reality. Dissolution of illusion is key. Transmutation of fear is essential. Every single human walking the face of the planet has generational trauma lodged within their cellular composition that requires deep quantum clearing. Upon cleaning and clearing stagnant energy, you will step more fully into alignment, empowerment, and purity of your soul. The energy of your soul will effortlessly guide you to the next logical step for greater impact and assist you in bringing your vision into conscious form. Valerie Atelis interviews Robert Grover and Gary Logan. They are contemporary shamans. Robert Grover and Gary Logan, also known as the Journeyman Collective, are contemporary shamans who guide high network visionaries through an acceleration of their potential and awaken their higher purpose within the whole human collective. Through this sacred journey, which combines an array of techniques, including guided mushroom ceremonies, they help business leaders and executive teams to align their companies with a greater vision and purpose while expanding their own individual consciousness. Meet Robert Grover and Gary Logan at thejourneymancollective.com. Here is the interview with Robert Grover and Gary Logan. In your own words, who is Robert Grover and who is Gary Logan? That's a, a loaded question. How <laughs> long do you have? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best way to describe who we are is exactly who we be and what we do for the world. And it's the the creation of our of our conscious company called the Journeyman Collective, whereby we curate luxurious plant medicine journeys for visionaries who really yearn to create soulful, conscious impact for the whole of humanity. And that's what we're all about. It's all come from uh, our own soulful alignment and listening to spirit, listening to our souls and basically doing what we're told. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How did you discover that? How did that happen, Robert and Gary? Approximately about four and a half years ago, we, uh, Robert first embarked on his journey with a shaman in our area. And uh, I sort of let him go first as the test guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You go first. You go see what you <laughs> <Right>. like. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't need this. And then when Robert came back, he was like changed. 
he found his joy spot, as we will call it. And uh, he, his personality had changed. He was happier. And I thought, well, perhaps maybe I should go on a journey. Because at that time, I was going a, a bit depressed, uh, a bit low down. I lost my mother. She transitioned. And so life was changing. So I thought, well, since he had such a major shift and it was considerably noticeable, I thought, okay, let's go give myself a birthday present. So I met up with the shaman, spent a couple of days with him and came back. And I said, Robert, we're supposed to do what he's doing. And it all started there. And he says, I know. And I said, yeah, the signs were there and the visions were there. And here we are now, four years later. And, um, that's how the Journeyman Collective started. It sounds wonderful to me. Um, this, I call it the journey of the inner self, of the, our inner wisdom, the intuition. Some people call it the soul, the heart. We have so many names for it, but it's always present, right? It's there. But some of us don't listen to that voice. And I, I often wonder why we don't listen to it. Yeah, do you have any ideas why? Yeah. <laughs> you do. <Yeah. laughs> I think the biggest part is that uh, it's trained out of us and we're, we're never actually uh, put in environments that actually let us listen to that and trust that inner guidance. Yeah, it's basically just worked out of us and uh, the current cultural programs are basically put upon people, put upon children to say, no, this is what life is. This is how you're supposed to behave. And this is what reality is. And this is how you're supposed to think. And that leads to depression. And people make their way through life and then they are at a crossroads and they, they just don't know. They know that there's something else there within them that wants to be connected to, that wants to be released out into the open. And it's that whole aspect of people have been masked up um, with the energetic masks. People have to be trained or guided to connect to themselves again, connect to the inner child, connect into the soul, connect into a deeper awareness of self. It's interesting. So it's conditioning, programming, and now we, uh, we need to train to unlearn those conditionings. It's sad in a way, but it's, in looking from a different perspective, it's fun too, isn't it? This play of learning and unlearning. It seems like that's what life is all about too. It's that dance. And with that in mind, what do you think is or feel is the purpose of the human experience? Why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> it is. <Wow. laughs> the contract that we've written when we came into earth a lot of us you know at the beginning of life we have our freedom is there of exploration and creativity as robert says you know i think from the day you were born until you're about five or six or seven you have this innate ability to create and be who you are without any outside influences and um that is where I always ask the clients, so if you're stuck and if you could paint the picture of the world of where you want to be and if this isn't the job you're doing right now, what is the job that you want or what were you doing when you were five, six or seven, you know, and what made you happy then? What did you look forward to then? And a lot of them come back and say, I was creative, I, I was painting, I was drawing, I was dancing, I was singing, all these ideas that were suppressed as they grew up. Some people have great luck and they all follow through on their creativity. But a number of people get stuck in the nine to five to, and then they come out and say, who am I? Where am I? Where am I going? And we remind them or encourage them to look back when they were younger. And maybe that was their spark of joy then. And that's who they truly are. The world got in the way of who they're truly being. Yeah, so it is a remembrance, right, Gary? Yes. It's going yes. back to that. It's remembering into your true self. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it really resonates. So what is contemporary shamanism? And talk to me about the techniques involved and how do you host these journeys? We honor the traditional. We honor it. And then 
we have to listen to our own soul. We listen to that inner guidance. We blend the full spectrum of the, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, and the, the physical embodiment of the work. And some people may call it galactic or cosmic or universal knowledge. And that energy is streaming through us during the ceremonies that we guide people through. And it's always for a select group of people and it's guided. We, we don't just uh, give people the medicine and walk away. We're with people from the time that they land in our presence to the time they, that they go to bed every single night. So it's an intensive process. What is spirituality to you? And is shamanism a spiritual practice? Spirituality in my mind is my mind, my body, my emotions. It's the whole being I feel encapsulates the word spirituality. You don't have to say spirituality. You can just say I am who I am. And, uh, you know, when people come to us, it's, well, I don't do any spirituality that so forth. And sometimes they relate it to a religion. And then we say, well, there's nothing really religious about what we do. It's like you can make your own church of yourself, which is your own religion, which is a good thing to do. And then you, then you just open yourself up to new ideas, new ways of thinking and being. And that changes, if you are open for it, changes your whole outlook on life. If you just start meditating and people don't even know that we know of, come to us and I've never meditated it's like it's just like a five minute practice and then you just expand from there it's actually giving yourself that permission time to focus to go into self and a lot of humans don't give them that that, that permission to themselves to, to actually stop go in listen and then reconnect you know it's all taking time instead of rushing so yeah spirituality is, is the whole self the whole being mm-hmm. I love that, um, this idea that everything is spiritual. How do you define true power? What would that be? True power is always from the inside out. When we actually attune ourselves to be able to listen to our heart, uh, as we know, the, the heart has a magnetic field, and that magnetic field has unique energy within it that we can all listen to and translate into conscious form so that we can create things from it. And yeah, that's... I feel when you said true power, what you know, the words that come to mind is that I'm standing in my pillar of strength. Mm. Centered. Centered, grounded, connected. That is where you get your innate power from, your innate strength, your innate clearness of thought. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in a way, spirituality, healing, authenticity, uh, this inner strength that you speak of, they're all connected, aren't they? Very connected. So speaking of healing, what are some of the signs? Would that be inner strength? But for some of us, it's different. It doesn't really, let's say, stay there constantly. It's not a destination that we arrive and then we never leave that place <laughs> because of this dance that I call it in life of um, going in and out of balance. So for you, how can we, um, oh, let's say, have that sense, that feeling that we have arrived in that space of healing, not being a destination? What are the signs? The well, it goes back to your true, it's your inner guidance, isn't it? And so, people are totally off the scale on their inner guidance and totally disconnected. We always say, instead of the uh, the headless chicken running around the universe world, it's the bodiless human that is running around. There's all these heads that are going around who are not in their heart, and then they'll get a touch of that. And then we try to keep reminding people to remember going into your heart. What does that feel like? And the more you go into it and the more you, it's like, it's a new habit you're creating because you want to dissolve the old and release the old habits that no longer serve. So it's like remembering that moment of calmness, even if it's like for 30 seconds, you keep bringing yourself back to it. So um, Mm -hmm. does that sort of answer? question yeah yeah it does in the sense of like we talked earlier about remembrance so it has to do with knowing how to go back home so that place we call home is that inner strength this 
It's a feeling of liberation, though, for me, has been. <laughs> Some people call, I use the word joy, but there's a sense of peace, yeah, that I am, whatever it's in here, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's letting life guide its mm-hmm. destiny. And it feels really liberating. It feels, yeah, it feels amazing, though. Really amazing. It's almost indescribable in a way. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's we've learned to uh, not trust that in life. And so remembering back into that trust of flow, that divine universal intelligence flows through all of us, spirit, energy, all of that flows through us at all times. And if we just open up our awareness to listening to that and sensing that and feeling that and smelling it and touching it, it's always there for us. We just have to reestablish our, our capacity to trust. And when I think about it nowadays, it's, um, I wonder, who am I trusting? It seems like it's not a whole. It's really life itself, because I don't have any concept of entities or beings. So I just feel like this energetic resonance from the environment, like from the moment. It's almost like becoming the moment every time submerging with life itself and, and flowing with it. Not even trust. It's almost giving yourself to life. I usually say, I don't have a life. I am life. So it's giving yourself. That might be true love in a way, isn't it? Just giving yourself to life. Yeah, surrendering into that higher will. It really feels like that. What are some of the misconceptions we have about healing, Robert and Gary? That the Western world can heal us. (laughs) (laughs) True. (laughs) So true. (laughs) End of story. story. (laughs) So if you're talking on an energetic, physical aspect of pain and within, pain is held, isn't it? It's an emotion that's held and trauma that is held. So try to identify that or try to realize what it is. And it's the words that we tell ourselves about the pain and the injury that is going on. So those stories that are looping through our minds interfere with our healing process. So the idea is if you were diagnosed with something and you live into that diagnose, then you're just going to keep going on living into that. You know, this is just a theory. It is, you know, people, you know, there are miracles that do happen in the world that people do heal immediately with change of thought and uh, their approach on life. Uh, Sometimes I feel that the pain are are, are awakening calls to us. It's time to pay attention and give attention to self and work on self to help self heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. So, so true. And when you you speak of self, I think about self-love and self-care. Yeah, what is your idea in understanding of self-love? I think that ties into what we were talking about before, like trust and surrendering self into higher will. And, and when we actually allow ourselves to rest into that love of self, of love within the cosmos, within the planet, within your home, within the home of self, that self-love allows you just to be directed to the perfect spot, the perfect place, every moment of your life, life moment by moment. So an example of that, you could be working at the computer and all of a sudden you get this inner ping of like, wow, like I need to go lay down. I need to go meditate or I just need to go for a walk in the forest or I just need to call someone. And listening to those inner pings, those universal pings, I believe is a huge aspect of self-love and nurturing yourself, um, getting out of the the maya of like, I have to work, 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 work until I'm exhausted every single day. And we can actually flow through life and create. Um, There's an abundance of of abundance that's available to everyone. The working yourself to the bone idea is the exact opposite of self-love whereby it's it's all based on scarcity and lack. So it's recognizing that abundance is everywhere can actually allow self to be nurtured into a, a new level of self-care. That makes me think about fear. So that might be the, the reason why most of us have these uh, limiting beliefs and hold on to conditionings because of fear. So I often wonder what the antidote to fear is. Mm -hmm. 
it's asking that fear. It's interesting because we had this come up in a call yesterday whereby um, someone was predicting that some of their past was going to repeat itself and, and recognizing that it was fear and panic and anxiety was taking place. And all that is, is when we actually know what fear is, when we understand how it works through the whole spirit, mental, emotional, and physical body, when we recognize how that works, we can work with it and we can use it as creation. So when it's used in a negative way, some like an idea will pop in somebody's head and then they'll bring it down the wrong side of the energetic funnel in the negative side. And that aspect, that idea that's given, there's self-doubt, which then leads to fear and anxiety. And that's not expressed, it's suppressed. And what happens is that golden nugget of the idea gets covered in poo from the old ways of thinking, the old ways of being and doing things. And when that comes in and we can, when we can recognize it, that's where the evolution and growth comes in so that we can actually be excited when fear comes in and know that, Oh, I've just been given an idea and I can actually create from it. What a great insight. Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's removing the word. What if I call them what ifers? Well, what if, Blah, what if blah blah it's like no just remove that from your dialogue you know you can always change it and say i wonder what mm -hmm. it would be like and i'm a big believer in wonder i've had so many stories about i wondering that come true you know miracles do happen i wonder you know and so use the wonder instead of what uh oh, what if first mm -hmm. what do you love most about being in a human body Having croissants every weekend. <laughs> that sounds great too. <laughs> of course. Every day is a new day, of course. I mean, that's so cliche, isn't it? But it's the discovery of creativity, that there's an idea that comes through and follow through with that idea. Because, it, you know, ideas come from source. So we, as long as you're open to it, you receive it and follow through with it. That's the exciting thing. It's like... Is like ideas come through and I say to Robert, and then look, that idea I had like five years ago, it has now come true. And it's like, if I acted on that, maybe that would have been my creativity. But as the universe sends it out to the world, those that are ready to receive the ideas are able to follow through. So there is a um, being ready kind of uh, mode, right? We need to be ready to receive those messages and... Uh, that's so interesting because I really trust life in a sense that it's trying to support us in every way to be liberated, to be happy and free. Mm -hmm. But for some people, it never happens, though. They live this their entire lives here and it doesn't really happen for them. And I, I often wonder why, too. Yeah, well, for the, it's, it's coming back to the, the fear question. Mm -hmm. We all have fear stored in our neurological system, stored in our cells, stored in our like generational trauma that has been induced upon our parents, 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 and people have experienced different levels of trauma in this lifetime. And when we don't give ourselves that time to actually go inward and honor self and heal and acknowledge and release that energy of fear, then it's always going to be there. It'll creep itself up into your life in the form of stress and depression and disease. And we're seeing it in today's world. Like stress is, I think, at an all time high in everyone's life because there's so much truth that's being revealed to people who are willing to see it. But if, if the human being doesn't give themselves the time to dislodge the old stagnant energy, the old fear, then it, it's just going to keep looping. And I think that's the beauty of the human experience of just being curious to like, I wonder what this energy that's in my body, it's like, oh, I have a pain in my shoulder. I wonder what that is. And just asking it. And typically something will come from it. If we start asking the questions of self, given the clues that we're aware of that are in our field. Another question I have for you is about 2020. What insights have you gained from the events in 2020 and were they connected to spiritual evolution? 
<laughs> We've already spoken about this a little bit in that um, when the global shit show took place, we were asked to go inside. And the, the true message of all of that is actually taking that time to go inside of self shut off the television, shut off the phone, shut off all outside distractions, go inside and discover a deeper connection to self. When you discover that deeper connection to self and you're connected within yourself, connected to a deeper level of awareness and wisdom, then you can connect with others and you, you can connect others, connect more with others in your family, your, your community, your businesses. And as a result, that elevates the consciousness on the planet. Something that you said on your website, you write, the greatest power you will ever have is the expansiveness of your multidimensional awareness of pure reality. To me, it resonates as freedom. And then you also mentioned uh, illusions. The solution of illusion is key, and that's so true. Uh, transmutation of fear, as we is essential. Do you want to elaborate on that for a moment, Rob and Gary? We have been talking about it, I guess, already. Yeah. When, so when people come on journeys with us, that for the most part, like the first stage of the process is really clearing out the old. And for the most part, it's clearing out of the old fear, the old stuck energies, the old disbelief in self. Uh, people really get to sit with that and acknowledge it and let it go, but it can't be acknowledged until you let it go. And when we clear out the old, then we can actually step into that deeper connection to self and recognize that we have an infinite potential of energy and possibility within ourself. And that access point of the, the heart center, the soul spark that we have all come into this lifetime with is the access point for multidimensional reality, that there are realms other than we live in here that we can access information from for the greater good, for a harmonious relationship with the planet. And, and when we expand our awareness, that's when we start to recognize that we're all connected to everything and anything that ever is, that ever was, it's coming back to that soulful alignment of we're in a new stage of evolution and people are being requested to step up to that new level. And a lot of people don't know how to access that new level and the journeyman collective lovingly, compassionately care for people through our journeys to actually bring them to that next level and guide them to be empowered to create that next level of their of their life and their relationships and their and their business yeah this idea of alignment it um, makes me think about harmony and balance that's what we see in nature right so the flow of nature just doing what it does so great gracefully and that beautiful dance are there any side effects or risks when going through a shamanic journey, Robert and Gary? I think the only risk is that you have to be willing to let go of the old ways of being. And you may be requested upon to really let go of all the things that you thought you were, which you weren't. They were just put upon you by other people and by the cultural societal norm and um, we always uh, screen our people very very well and some people think oh am I going to lose my mind <laughs> and you're actually going to find your mind <laughs> <laughs> yes losing the well, mind is actually good isn't it <laughs> the thing is you're not going to lose your identity of who you are as a person what you're what your friends and family are probably going to notice when you come back from a journey is uh, how light you are. Lightness of being is like in your eyes or the clarity in the eyes and just who you are resonating with the world now has changed. Uh, you're happier, you're lighter, you're freer. Uh, you have a new outlook on the world because your eyes are now open. Mm -hmm. 
you've taken the blinders off and you've opened and expanded your awareness to where you are and who you are. Mm -hmm. So another thing that caught my attention on your website about what you do is um, you mentioned vegetarian cuisine and there's an uh, intuitive chef the guides that, that prepared the meals. So I wonder if um, vegetarianism and shamanic journeys and spiritual practices, are they connected or this is just something that you do particularly? It's something unique. It's not unique. It's what we do. It's what we've been guided to through our practice that uh, preparing the, the vessel, the body for the journey process is it is advised that we go on a vegetarian cuisine um, uh, meal plan up into the journey and after the journey. Uh, but if your body requires a protein during that time and we'll say, OK, great, we try to limit the protein at least a week before you come on a journey. Mm -hmm. So it's just preparing the vessel for this is clean, you know, reduce alcohol intake, uh, other means that you just need to release for the time being. It's like, but it's not steadfast that mm -hmm. you have to be a vegetarian or vegan. It's just that we feel that's the best for the body at the time going through the journey process. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that just comes from we never truly know how our animal protein is prepared and honored. And there's more energy that gets put upon the individual um, if their animal protein source isn't clean, we'll call it. So let's see. I have the ending questions. Those um, I'll be asking you in the moment. But before that, would you like to add anything else that we didn't cover? You know, there's a story that came to me about, um, you talk about abundance and it doesn't have to be wealth. It could be joy or wherever you are in life. You know, abundance is, you can have that explanation to anything. So I met this woman, she was uh, living on the streets. This is a few years ago and I felt called to speak with her. So I went over and spoke to her and uh, her name is Rose, beautiful lady, bright eyes. And I offered, you know, who she was. She asked me, I asked her who she was, and she shared a little bit about her story coming to Vancouver. You know, she'd been here since 85, and that it didn't turn out the way she wanted it to, so she ended up living on the street since, like, 1986. And so she's been on the street for a long time, but she looked the brightest, happiest woman that I have ever seen. <laughs> and I said, is there anything I can do for you? And she says, what would you like to do for me? I said, well, I can offer you some financial assistance if you wish, or I can bring you some clothes. And then she says, you know, you know, financial assistance, nice. And so I, I gave her an amount of money and uh, she was happy. She, just, she actually didn't want to take it. But I said, you know, if you don't want it, I, I, I'm here like every day because I was going swimming where she was living. And uh, she ended up being the happiest happiest person that I had met. She was happy with her life and where she was going. I'm sure she was, um, she wanted to go elsewhere in her world, but at the, at that time, this is where she's made home. And she was, you know, you know, okay with where she was at. And, and we have to be okay where we're at, you know, and find out that, okay, I'm okay, but I, I know there's more than okay out there. I want to be a, a lot bigger than okay. Mm -hmm. so there's more growth there's and evolution. More growth. Yes. And it's the, the soul that's always calling for that. I think the key with what Carrie was talking about is just being happy with where you're at, but having that deeper curiosity to want to grow more and evolve and just help more people on the planet. That resonates to this idea of um, acceptance. From that comes inner peace, though, has been my experience. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, it seems like whatever life wants to do after that, wants to experience, then it will happen. Nothing gets in the way of life anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't need our help. <laughs> it just does it. <laughs> so how do you define success these days? What is to be successful to you? I think it's coming back to the end of what I just spoke. If you're helping other people, uh, you're doing, you're being and doing who you're called here to be. If you've remembered into why you're here, into your and you're living into your higher purpose, and you're in that quest for a higher purpose, then that's what I would define as success. 
What was the hardest lesson to learn about yourself in life as of today? Um, define the word love. <laughs> That was a, a big eye opener a few years ago for me. Is like we can say we're in love, but what does in love actually feel like? And that's where uh, the awakening happened to me. Is like, oh my God, you know, this is what in love feels like, other than just coming from my head and saying, I'm in love with you and or, or I love this. How do we feel love? And that's where I feel there's a big disconnection out there. People say, oh, I love you. Yeah, but wh where's that I love you coming from your head or is it coming from your heart? Right. So that was my big awakening. I love that. How would you describe that feeling? Uh, exactly just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I like that. <laughs> the body. <laughs> oh, show. Sure even stronger you know the heart was reminding me to keep coming on to heart you know I could feel things going on in there and I thought you know you're thinking it's like oh my god is this gonna be a heart attack and I was like no no the heart is knocking at the door saying pay attention to me and give me attention and love and from there giving it love and attention expanded my love for others and the world that sounds like unconditional self-love um, yeah that pure love for self that's what it sounds to me but it might be <clears throat> we're just using words right yeah that's what it is definitely. yeah totally and two more questions what is another word for healing i think we've already touched on that too it's it's liberating the old stagnant energy that so many people carry within their beings and like we see it with the people that we work with like the executives and the entrepreneurs that we work with, they they have brilliant lives, but they, they don't know how to liberate that old stuck energy. And so that's where we come in. It's knowing how to have that, uh, or having that tool set within self to learn from, from someone else and then start taking that practice on for yourself and devoting yourself to that practice so that you evolve as a human being. Healing is a another word. I see it as a, a release. Mm. I've released the excess tension that is held within my body. And that is the act of healing, I feel. Yeah, that's a beautiful word, release. Yeah, it feels like liberation. I love that word, freedom, liberation. Yeah, releasing. Ah, even when we breathe, that can be felt too, right? That release. Uh, my last question is, what are three things you wish everyone to experience before they lose the body, before we die? Um, the number one thing, I think, is that everyone should allow themselves to embark on a shamanic plant medicine journey at least once in their, in their life you don't have to do it repeatedly but i think that's one thing mm -hmm. gary you can probably add another uh, it comes back to that word i said love learn and understand what love actually is to you other than just the definition in the, out of the dictionary it's feeling it and being it Mm, wow. I love that, of course. I use the same word. Um, I have to. No other words to describe love. I know, totally. Yeah. I think the last thing would be I would love it if every human on the planet could expand their awareness to recognize that we live on this little tiny speck of dust hurtling through space. <laughs> that speck of dust is called Earth. And there is so much that is out there that is unknown there are other frequencies there are other beings there's other cosmic intelligence that's there for all of us to tune into so if more people could just do that and open up to that possibility i think there would be so much more love on the planet yes have more curi curiosity mm. always be curious don't Settle, never settle for anything because settling is giving in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're not here to give in. You're here to expand and grow whatever way possible. 
I love that. I love your presence. I love what you do. Uh, I love your intention. I love your energies. <laughs> Thank you for being you, Rob and Gary. Really beautiful. So before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your work, product, services, and future projects? You can reach us on our website, uh, www.thejourneymencollective, one word, dot com. We also have an Instagram and a Facebook page with the same name, The Journeyman Collective, and we'd be happy to um, speak. Mm -hmm. Read about us, read yeah. what's on our website. If you feel that call to work with us, then click the apply to connect. And we love hearing from people who want to uh, raise themselves up to that next level of consciousness and really, truly have an impact on the planet. Yeah. and on humanity. Thank you so much again. And we'll talk soon. Bye for now, Robin. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Robert Grover and Gary Logan and their work, please visit thejourneymancollective.com. more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.